Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Friday. I hope everybody's doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about all this mess that is going on with the Meg Thee Stallion, Tory Lanez, Kelsey drama. So once again, Kelsey is trending on social media. Before I get into that, I want to go ahead and say this. Now, from day one, I've told you guys, I have no dog in this fight, and I still have no dog in this fight. I'm the type of person, when something doesn't make sense to me mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, I check the fuck out, Okay. I don't sit and waste my time, my energy, or my brain power trying to decipher a bunch of nonsense that's not making sense and a bunch of convoluted mess. Now, what I've noticed is that, you know, several, and this is why I don't like fandoms, because y'all get so emotionally invested in shit that really don't have nothing to do with y'all and that you really don't even benefit from. But I've noticed like quite a few of Megan's fans have been coming for me. And I even had one lunatic blame me, blame me, somebody who's never met Megan. I've never met Tori. I don't know Kelsey from a can of paint. They literally blame me for Kelsey getting on the stand and pretending to have amnesia. Some of you fans literally need to go get checked out mentally. There's something wrong with y'all that y'all get so invested in stuff that one is not even benefiting you financially. Some of y'all need to unplug from the Internet and go for a walk. Go breathe. OK, because how I'm getting blamed for Kelsey's testimony is beyond me. Also, I have blocked all these crazy lunatic fans. If you're one of the people who was calling yourself liking trolling comments, you are also blocked. Do not email me. Do not contact my mods. Do not be in the Discord writing posts about how you were blocked off my Instagram page. My Instagram has nothing to do with my Discord. If you're sitting here co-signing lies and lunatics leaving stupid comments, then that means that you're not really a real tea sipper anyways. Because from day one, I've said I have no dog in this fight. With that being said, there have been other YouTubers who have clearly chosen a side. There are black female YouTubers who have been Team Tory from day one. Y'all are not attacking them. Y'all are not in their comments, but somehow I'm being accused of having something to do with Kelsey's testimony. You can't make this shit up, child. Now, this is my issue with this whole situation. Y'all watch me on my live stream. Y'all watched me watch it live with you guys when uh, the guy from Lawyers for Work came out and he was basically saying that, you know, within the first five minutes, Kelsey was, you know, pleading the fifth. And, you know, like I said, this is weird that this woman is pleading the fifth. If you were innocent, you had nothing to do with it. Why are we pleading that whatever I say in court can't be used against me? This makes no sense. I even said at this point, I'm starting to look at it like, damn, maybe you are Kelsey Salvador. You know what I'm saying? Y Yolanda Salvador is the one who had killed Selena. Like, you know, you're giving me Yolanda vibes at this point. This doesn't make any sense. So I'm confused as to how... I was taking up for Kelsey in my live stream. Now, my thing is this. I'm not invested into any of this shit with these people. I do commentary. I give my opinion. I keep it moving. And when you're not invested and you have no dog in this fight, you can look at all perspectives from a clear point of view because I'm not a Meg Thee Stallion fan. I'm not a Tory Lanez fan. I'm not a Kelsey fan. I said from day one, I wanted to hear Kelsey's testimony. I wanted to hear what Kelsey had to say because Meg and Tory's back and forth was so convoluted, it made no sense. The only thing that we really had proof of was the fact that something definitely happened to Meg's foot, okay? Nobody can deny that. The woman is on video limping. There is blood on the ground. Something happened to her foot, okay? After that, the story just, just took on literally legs, no pun intended, of its own. And I'm the type of person I just don't enjoy being mindfucked. And I'm not going to waste my energy trying to decipher who's wrong, who's right, whose team I'm on. I'm on team nobody. I feel like all three of them 
have helped to convolute this case. Between the silly Gail King interview, between Tom Thumb going on the shade room and running his mouth, clearly stating that Kelsey didn't shoot Meg. So if Kelsey didn't shoot Meg, we have not seen this driver. They Nobody can find the driver if y'all don't know that. Hey, what up, subscribers? Thank y'all for subscribing. This is the first post of Friday. This is the last day of the week of the first week of trial. There's going to be another week of trial next week. The government expected to rest their case on Monday. The big question on my mind, the mind of everybody in that courtroom, I'm sure everybody involved in this case, after this video, it's going to be the big question on your mind. Where is Quant? Quan was the driver. He was the only adult in that room. At this point, you might be saying to yourself, I don't believe nothing that Meg says. I don't believe nothing that Kelsey says. You would believe what Quan says. Quan was not drunk. Quan seems in the testimony that we've heard so far to be a very reasonable, responsible security guard. It was reported by the defense, I think two weeks ago, that they can't find Quan. They're looking for him. They want him to testify to be a witness, but they can't find him. Maybe they have an ace in their hole. Maybe they find him. If he is found and if he testifies and if he sides with Tory, this is game over. So he's not going to be getting on the stand anytime soon unless they're able to find him before the trial ends. But so far, they've heard nothing from this driver. So if there were four people in the car, we know the driver didn't shoot. We know Megan didn't shoot herself. It leads there to be two people. Tory clearly said on the shade room that Kelsey didn't do it. And back in September, during her deposition, Kelsey also said that Tory did it, okay? In text messages obtained by CBS News, Kelsey Harris, the other woman in the car, texted Megan's security guard saying, help, Tory shot Meg. I feel like at this point, they have all helped to contribute to make this entire thing just a bunch of damn fodder, as opposed to being a real criminal case. Between the songs, the diss tracks from all parties, the back and forth on social media, this has turned into a mess. We're no closer to solving the Scooby-Doo mystery of who shot Meg. Even yesterday, one of, one of the things that came out was an emotional testimony from Meg. Meg was talking about how this whole situation has had a negative effect on her partner. And she was saying, I feel disgusted. I feel dirty. My own partner is embarrassed. I can't even be happy. I don't want to talk to friends and family. And basically, she's embarrassed and upset, and it looks like Party Fontaine is embarrassed and upset because her sexual history is being drug out there. And I told you guys this months ago that they were going to drag her sexual history out there, and I got attacked for speaking the truth. I said they're going to use that as a defense. That happens all the time with women. Our sexual history, it may not have anything to do with the situation, but if they can try and taint your character in any way, that is what they're going to do. And the fact, that's why it didn't make any sense why she was lying to Gail King, because all of this is going to come out in the wash any damn ways. Do I care who she slept with? Absolutely not. It doesn't make me any difference. All these people are grown. I've always said that. Even when the baby came out with his stupid ass diss track, sir, who cares? You're not faithful. You have all these kids out of wedlock by different women. You've been extremely disrespectful to all your baby's mothers. I don't care about this diss track that you have towards Meg. You're a weirdo, okay? So, yes, they're using her sex life against her. So, again, this is what they're going to do. Her lyrics are very sexual in nature. They're trying to basically put her sexual lyrics and the fact that she slept with these people on trial to show reasonable doubt, to show that that's really what caused this whole drama between her and Kelsey so they can pin the shooting on Kelsey. That is the way that the defense is trying to go. And that's why I said months ago that they were going to use her sex life against her and it made no sense for her to get up on Gail King and lie. Now, another thing that's come out is that both lawyers on both sides have repeatedly had to remind Kelsey that her immunity, okay, her plea in the fifth, does not shield her from perjury charges. Because Kelsey is claiming now that she doesn't know who shot Meg. She didn't see Tori do anything. They're asking, you know, well, if y'all fought in the driveway, what happened during the fight? Neither Meg is going into that fight situation. Maybe she doesn't remember. She might have been really drunk. Kelsey is claiming that they just bumped into each other. Bumping into somebody does not cause their fingernail to fall off or jury to fall off of their bodies, okay? For jury to be on the ground and a fingernail to be on the ground, y'all were bombing. And the fact that Kelsey's on trial, sitting here trying to play, you know, like she has amnesia and she doesn't remember anything, to me is a joke. 
And it to me, it's disgusting. So this is what I wrote on Instagram. I said, shake my head. This entire case is a clown circus. She's obviously trying to make this case further messy because she don't fool with Meg or Tori, but she's trying to keep herself out of jail too. Clown emoji. I don't know why she thinks lying and forgetting details can't lead to her facing new charges. Okay. When everybody was saying that they wanted to hear Kelsey's side, we're coming from the fact that for the most part, it seemed like Kelsey was, it seemed like Kelsey was the neutral one. Everybody for the most part feels like Tori was the one who pulled out the gun. Tori had the most reason to shoot, right? He also had gun residue powder on his hands. Then we find out that Kelsey did too. So at this point in time, it's like she's going out her way to basically how I'm looking at it is she don't fuck with Meg. She's mad at Meg and she's being super petty towards Meg because Meg has fucked guys behind her back that she was fucking with. It came out during the trial that first Kelsey was messing with Ben Simmons and Kelsey was messing with the baby only for Meg to run up behind her and mess with the same guys. And Meg messing with Tori might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. On top of that, she was sent to jail uh, she was bullied online. She was harassed for months on end. So to me, she's playing a very vicious game of petty get back at Meg. She's siding with Tori, but trying to make it look like she's not siding with Tori. You know, because everybody was waiting for her testimony. Everybody felt like she'd be the strongest witness in this entire case for both sides because the driver is gone. So now we have Kelsey sitting here lying acting like she doesn't know anything. So it was announced yesterday that the judge was going to allow the full audio of Kelsey Harris's 80 minute September interview with the prosecutors. Well, Nancy Dillon reported that today they only heard the recording of Kelsey claiming Tori threatened to shoot her inside the SUV. She says we never heard her September account of allegedly seeing Tori with the gun. Prosecutors claimed that she was very detailed and said things like she wanted to speak truth to free herself and had nothing to hide. And they go on to say when she got on stand, she disavowed her September statements regarding the threats, seeing Tori with the gun and being assaulted by Tori or offering her money slash favors slash a lawyer. Her husband, Darren Smith, was in court with her sitting next to her lawyer. And prosecutors stated that Darren Smith was also there during her September interview. OK, now what I find very interesting is this. Now, everybody's saying that they're assuming that Tori paid her off and that could be a possibility. Right. But I remember when I was on live and I was saying to you guys, her husband works in the industry. I didn't know all the ins and outs at the time because I just couldn't think of it right there live on spot. But I said her husband works in the industry. He works behind the scenes. So I got to doing more digging on Mr. Darren D. Boy Smith. And not only is he in the industry, but he's also an executive at 1501. He has very close ties to Erica Banks, who he's heavily promoting. He's gotten, you know, plaques for her music. Erica Banks is who is sanctioned to basically be the first female now of 1501, being that Meg Thee Stallion left and she's with Rock Nation. Now, as we all know, 1501 is ran by Carl Crawford, and he's currently in the middle of a really bad lawsuit with Meg Thee Stallion over her recording contract. And they've been going back and forth since about 2020. Now, if you guys remember back then, shortly after the whole shooting and the drama went down in 2020 with Meg, Kelsey, and Tori, all of a sudden we start seeing Kelsey running with 1501. And what I find very interesting is I think that is the time when Kelsey was introduced to Darren. I don't really think she knew Darren before then. She might have, but I'm assuming that's when her and Darren got closer. Because you can see old videos of her. Because remember when she first started hanging out with 1501, people on social media were dragging her. And she even did a video that a lot of people forgot about with Jay Prince and Carl Crawford. I want y'all to go ahead and check this out. Great. Hey, what y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? It's two things that is earned and cannot be bought. What is that? Tell them. Respect and loyalty. There we go. There are two things that cannot be earned and bought. Jay Prince says 
respect, and loyalty. So I'm reading very deep into that video. I had to go back in my archives and, and pull that out. So I'm reading very deep into that video. So at this point, what I am thinking is going on is this. She has no respect or loyalty towards Meg because of everything that went down between the two of them. She has no real loyalty towards, you know, Tori because Tori was also cheating on her. But who she does now have not only loyalty, but blood, okay, is the person who is the executive of 1501. 1501, like it or not, is now her bread and butter. She's married now. She's not just a baby mother. She's married to Darren Smith. That is now her husband. Remember, she gave birth to their son a few months ago. Adorable little boy, I might add. She had his baby. So what I'm thinking is that this is not even so much about Tori or Megan. This is about creating doubt on Megan's character, muddying up the waters, because Megan is still about to fight another big lawsuit coming down the pipeline with Carl Crawford in 1501 certified. Kelsey is playing chess not checkers. If you guys remember, this was just in November. I know the internet has a short attention span. But back on November 3rd, Megan said on a daily basis, LOL, the men, not man, the men over in that camp haven't been clearing my music to be synced anywhere. For shows, movies, etc. I almost couldn't even do my Amazon performance tonight. Okay. So when she's talking about men, there's several powerful men over there at 1501. And one of those powerful men now happened to be Kelsey's husband and the father of her child, Mr. Darren Smith. Okay? So this rabbit hole goes very, very deep. This is why Kelsey is muddying up the waters. She's trying to muddy this up. Because, again, if Tori gets off because it ends up being a mistrial because none of this shit is making sense, everybody at this point is just sounding batshit crazy, you know, with the exception of Megan because she's the victim. I think that if this ends up going into a mistrial, it's going to really help 1501 in their case. And also, let's not forget, Tori has hung out with these people as well. Tori has been spotted with 1501 and Carl Crawford and, you know, I haven't seen any pictures with him and Kelsey. He's definitely been seen in pictures with Carl Crawford. Remember, see, a lot of y'all have short-term memory. Remember in April of this year, Tory Lanez was kicking it with Carl Crawford, J. Prince Jr. Now, even though Kelsey isn't seen in this picture, her husband is one of the executives at 1501. I think this case and Kelsey's testimony is going way deeper. People saying that Tori paid her off, that's surface level shit. If they really want to go and comb through bank statements to see if Tori gave her a cold million dollars, they can eventually do that. But I think that's very surface level thinking. I'm thinking this has a lot to do with the 1501 label. And remember before Tori was kicking it with 1501, Megan and Carl Crawford, they got into it on social media. This was back in March of 2022, where Megan was saying, Carl, I don't want to be signed to your pill popping ass. You talking about I ain't paid for a show. You sound slow. I'm the artist. I don't pay you directly. Maybe fight with the man you signed to and you might see some money, you fucking powder head. You hiding behind Jay Prince. OK, remember, they were into it really bad in March. They went back and forth. Carl was calling her all types of liars and alcoholics and everything else. Then the following month, they're running with Tory. OK, so to me, this situation goes way deeper and I can look at it in a different angle because, again, I have no dog in this fight. I'm not team any of these people. I'm team the truth coming out. And once the truth comes out, the charges are applied accordingly. I'm not moved by Tori walking into court acting like Cal from Titanic. I have a child. I have a child. Chill out. Everybody back up. Give him room. Give him room. He's got the baby. Thank you so much. Beautiful family. Beautiful family. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Excuse me. Give him the space. Give him the space. Tori, which one is the outcome, my guy? Love. Jesus, oh, my friend. Oh, 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 oh,
Hey, 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 you two. All right, Smith. Don't fight. Your There's no out. fight, man. Yeah. I don't fight. <laughs> Sorry, how many times did you have sex with Megan? Granted, I guess he's talked about his child and his music, but before he got in trouble and was facing double digits, he wasn't really talking about his child like that. I might be wrong. I might have missed it. I wasn't seeing that. So I find it very interesting that now that he's going to court, this baby who should be in school is in a, in a courtroom literally off and on all day as if he's on trial. He's even dressed up wearing double-breasted suits. This is ridiculous. He's looking for sympathy, and I'm not buying it. At the end of the day, I don't know what's going to happen next week. I don't know how the jury's going to look at all of this, but I do believe that Kelsey knows what she's doing. She's definitely playing chess, but with those chess moves, she better hope that they don't come after her for perjury and for doing what is clearly obvious that she's doing. She's trying to fight for her husband, that label, and trying to keep money in her family's pockets. And she doesn't really care if she has to throw Meg under the bus or Tori under the bus. At this point, it's about that husband and that label. So on that note, I don't want to make this video too long. These are my opinions. You don't have to agree. I could care less. So once again, these are simply my opinions as somebody who has absolutely no dog in this fight. Anyone harassing me from any of these fandoms, you will be blocked expeditiously. Go take your worshiping to your favorite celebrities platform. Keep it out my Instagram comments. On that note, I'm out. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.